Explained by the Billy Meyer contacts. Mysteries, myths, legends, conspiracy theories, historical inaccuracies, and more. Compiled by David Chance, revised October 18, 2023. Shroud of Turin, a veil of Veronica, Shroud of Turin, veil of Veronica. Contact report 264. The Shroud of Turin, I am asked again and again about its origin, and whether it is real, whether actually Emmanuel is depicted on it. You have explained to me that the shroud is probably a real burial shroud, and a deceased person is depicted on it, but that it is not of Emmanuel. This corresponds to the facts. Contact report 415. Okay. Then still the question about the shroud, the so-called Shroud of Turin, which is claimed to be a shroud that carries the image of Emmanuel, alias Jesus. However, about this you once told me that it would be an image of an Italian merchant. That is correct because the shroud does not show the image of Emmanuel, but that of a merchant from Turin. Italy, called Caesar Canova. The shroud was made by the brother of the deceased, Luciano Canova, an alchemist. The process took place on 7th of June 1324 and lasted until 10th of June, i.e. four days. During this, the procedure was not such that the shroud was placed on the deceased and the latter was rubbed with chemicals, as is often claimed, but it was a very early form of photography whereby the corpse was placed vertically in front of a large glass lens, through which the image was then projected for four days through an effect of sunlight onto a large fabric surface soaked in chemicals in a dark room, after which the shroud was then treated with silver nitrate and the image became in that way visible and retained. Contact Report 418 But look here. A certain Paul Baday wrote a book called The Divine Face and subtitled The Adventurous Search for the True Face of Jesus. Sensational discovery image of Jesus on shell silk original relic of Christianity. Found again, Pope travels to Manapello, a Vatican crime novel. The Welt editor Paul Baday is certain to have solved the mystery of the Veil of Veronica, which has been missing for 400 years. Baday. We now know what Jesus looked like. In his book, the Rome correspondent of D. Velt describes how the mysterious shell silk veil was tracked down and what a complex puzzle he had to put together in an extremely exciting way. In his analysis of the possible meaning of the recovered shell silk cloth, Paul Bad meticulously strings together circumstantial evidence. The cloth shows the face of Jesus, how the image of the Savior on the relic was created. However, remains a mystery. The book comprises 318 pages, 16 color illustrations, and is bound in 14 to 22 sacometer format. Cardinal Joachim Meisner of Cologne is said to have looked at the cloth in Manopello and said, Do not doubt that it is genuine. Benedict XVI has informed himself extensively about the discovery of Paul Bade. The Pope is even considering visiting the muscle silk scarf in Manopello and worshipping it as a great relic of Christianity. Do you have any idea what is behind all this? For my part, I myself have never heard of this shell silk cloth. I do have some knowledge of it, yes, and it is explained very briefly. As with the Shroud of Turin, this assertion that the image of Emmanuel is supposed to be on the silk shroud is also an absolute nonsense. Contact Report 437 Many people with a Christian touch try to prove by all possible and impossible means that the Shroud of Turin, as well as the Tunic of Argenteuil, and the so-called Blood Cloth of Christ would actually trace back to Emmanuel, whereby also blood traces on the shrouds are supposed to prove this, etc. Can you perhaps say anything more about this? All these machinations are very well known to me, and they are machinations that have been falsified in the name of the Christianity. Therefore, counterfeiters who had come into possession of the shrouds sold them as Emmanuel relics to the believing Christians. During the whole deception, 
A Jew was involved whose name we could not determine, but who inflicted a wound on himself in order to fabricate the forgery and caught the blood that was used to prepare the relics. On this basis, the false claim is now built up that the relics were indeed those that would belong to Emmanuel, and that the blood was that of Emmanuel, which, however, does not correspond to the facts. That way thus. And do you know what blood group Emmanuel had? Indeed, we know that. It was blood group zero negative. And the cloth of the shroud, for example, do you know who had woven it? No, this is unknown to me. Our very difficult investigations only revealed that the merchant Caesar Canova, depicted on the cloth in his death, had acquired this as an old piece in Syria to serve as a robe. And because he cherished the old robe, he wore it on his commercial journeys to various countries, such as Israel, where he also traded at the Dead Sea and traveled through the Palestinian mountains. But he also wore the robe in Turkey, and when he was pursuing his trade in France and Italy, etc. When Canova then died, his brother paid his last respects by using the robe for the merchant's image. Then, I estimate, it is possible that soil, plant leaves, and plant pollen from all these places were able to deposit in the robe during his travels. Am I right with this assumption? If so, then that should be detectable. You are not mistaken because that was actually the case. And all these things can still be found today in the relics. Therefore, these are used for Christian-directed false analyses and false Christian belief-based claims. Contact Report 557 I was asked what wound the man had inflicted on himself in order to use it to smear the cloth that is now known as the Shroud of Turin. Are you able to say anything more specific about it? That is indeed the case, yes. The man was a Jew responsible for the traces of blood on the Shroud, which had been created by a man named Luciano Canova, an alchemist, in 1324. However, this man already died a little more than a year later, hence his entire legacy was sold, whereby the shroud then fell into the hands of the man who put the blood traces on the shroud. The man was of Jewish origin and a fraud, counterfeiter, liar, and swindler. 10. Since our last conversation on this matter, held by two of us in 2008, I have also been able to fathom its real name and further details. He was a man of about 180 centimeters in size, just about as tall as the deceased merchant Caesar Canova, who was depicted on the cloth in his death. He was called Jishak bin Nun, and he was a man who, as explained, spent his life with swindles, lies, counterfeiting and fraud, whereby nothing was of sufficient dignity and value for him not to eke out his criminal life through cheating, falsification, lying, and swindle. When it came to passing off the cloth as a shroud with regard to its name as that of Jesus of Nazareth, it was not too much for him to let an accomplice inflict the so-called Christ marks on all the right areas under the pain-killing influence of a drug, after which then immediately the shroud was laid very exactly on him, whereby the blood impressions resulted exactly at the precisely determined locations on the cloth, which was then in the year 1352 sold for a high price to the French king Jean II Le Bon. These are the facts that I was still able to fathom in relation to the facts of the falsification of blood. Contact Report 641 Yesterday on television I saw a program about the so-called Veronica welding cloth, which we already talked about in the 418th Contact Conversation on the 6th of May, 2006, Pleiadisch Pleia Hrenische Kontaktberichte, Volume 10, page 413, about which you said that the whole thing was nonsense. The aforementioned alleged sweat cloth, which is supposed to contain the image of Emmanuel alias Jesus, exists in several copies, and of course as alleged original also in the Vatican, 
but also as original in the church of Manopello, where it is known as Volto Santo of Manopello. It is an icon on a wafer-thin cloth of muscle silk that is revered as a relic in the small Italian town of Manopello in Abruzzo. The cloth became famous because of the mysteriousness of its origin, its material, and the face on it. The wafer-thin cloth consists of bissos or muscle silk, which is also called sea silk. This, then, with regard to the muscle silk and the Veronica image, which, as you have said, is absurd, precisely with regard to the assertion that the image represents the face of Emmanuel and Jesus respectively. Whose face is depicted on this picture of muscle silk? That is one question, the second of which refers to what you once privately mentioned, that the name Veronica was invented in relation to the woman who is said to have touched Emmanuel's face with the sweat scarf. You seem to have misunderstood me or forgotten what I really said, because I did not say that the name Veronica was invented, but the person Veronica, because this woman never existed. We've clearly clarified that. So in principle, we must say that there was neither this invented Veronica nor any other woman who gave Emmanuel one of the several so-called sweat cloths or touched his face with one of them. Even when he was unconscious in the tomb, no such cloth was laid on his face. The origin of the picture, which is supposed to be traced back to a woman named Veronica, who neither existed nor Emmanuel handed in or put on a so-called sweat scarf, as is traditionally claimed to be an invention, goes back to a painter named Cassilia, who lived in central Italy in the Tuscany region, which corresponds to today's Tuscany. This woman made the face of her husband Marcellinus on a shell silk scarf which she had received from Sicily and which was bought only a few years after its completion by a Catholic priest named Fufetius, who called it the image of Christ. I do not know what happened to them, except that they were used to make images and were admitted to church circles. That is what our notes make clear, but unfortunately not more.